this is what I'm going to show you today. And this is an example of how wrong things can go when things are put in the mail. And I got this some, uh, some time ago, but it has been in, in line of, of getting um, a topic for a video, but it has not happened yet. So this is the first time we see this computer and the style of this computer is like the early compacts or uh, my um, Atari that is featured in one of my uh, uh, Christmas calendar uh, series. And these type of uh, computers like this was actually uh, a thing and I remember several companies selling clones of, um, of these computers and this is actually such a, a clone. And I picked it up some uh, some time ago and I actually had um, the guy who, um, who sold it to, uh, to mail it to me and this is where the, the damage happened, at least I think it did, because on the picture it looked totally fine. And it was not really bad packed. It was packed in, in foam, but foam can only do so much. And that is because it's not all about heavy blows to the plastic. It's mostly about the mass and the inertia that you have when things are moving and it suddenly stops. And that is what happens on the postal mail conveyor belts when things are going into to sorting bins. It's going downhill in these gravity fed chutes that um, sort this into different uh, piles and this machine has seen some action before i got it you can see this i don't know if they ever been there but this is the expansion port and there are seems like there are two nuts missing here and also this screw has been opened before you can clearly see that this has a lot of scrape marks on it and these two screws are actually missing and if this has something to do with the damage yeah in some cases i think it does because probably the mass that hit this way would have a, a slightly less piece of movement if these screws were back in here but is this salvageable i don't know i have not opened the case yet and open the, the lid here so I really don't know but as you can see there are damage all over you have of course this corner here that is totally broken you do have some damage here even though this corner seems better but you do have a crack here along the hinge and you have a, a severe cracking here and the whole lid is displaced this way and you have the handlebar that is cranked and you do have this here so you can see that the screen actually goes like this and you of course have the cracks here in the locking me mechanism and also some damage here in in the front so this is actually what we got to work with and this is the hard drive bay this has not been in place and i can see a EDI, uh, eda cable down here and you have a, a floppy drive First order of business will try be to try to get this lid to lift off to see if there are cracks in the screen. And of course you can see here that this is this is badly damaged. And you can also see the name. This clone is the Arima. And I do remember seeing a Danish company selling this back in the day. But of course this has the Norwegian keyboard layout, so this was sold in Norway. And here you have some, some cables, this is probably for the backlight and this is um, for the signal cable for this screen. And I think this was a black and white screen and it's LCD and you have the, it's not a, a super twist or TFT, it's a, probably a super twist and not a, a TFT as you can see it has both the light and the contrast key. Yeah, the system is badly yellow. You can actually see here under the sliding keys that it used to be really white. You can also see here on the inside of the plastic. Yeah, and this handlebar was flipped and this keyboard is detachable like it is on my Acer. 
and also have some some standoffs so that it can be yeah used separately and this probably is yeah and this is also and this is damage that happened before it was sent this uh, plug all the pins are actually bent like a star out like this so that's not good yeah so that has to be fixed so I'm probably asking again is this salvageable I do think I will be able to get this to work if the screen is not damaged but is it worth it I don't know because even though I fixed this the plastic here is surely very brittle and will break for uh, next to nothing and while I will be able to glue the most of the plastic things back it will never be a carriageable computer I can't have this lifted and, and thrown around but as um, I don't know what these other guys call this trash to treasure or something this will always be more than no more than yeah looking really trashy because it's not everything here is fixable what about the power situation on this? This does have a barrel jack here and on off switch. On the back here there was no information about the power source. And try to turn it on the bottom. On the bottom there is, uh, there is nothing. So what do we feed this with? I really don't know but I will try to, to google this and, and check and I also will have to find out if this is center negative or center positive. Maybe I can just try with, since it's a normal hard drive that went into this, I would suppose that this should take more than uh, 12 volts but I want to be a, a bit more sure before I plug anything in. And we do have some serial number here. Yeah, by the way, I didn't mention, but this is um, a 386SX, 20 MHz, and there is some serial numbers and stuff in here. And I will try to, um, to Google and check if I can find some information about this. So I'm uh, Googling, this is what I found. This is um, a PC magazine from um, the October 16, 1990. And here it is tested, the Arima ACT 386 420. And even though I thought it was a 20 MHz 386 SX because it had a 420 name, it stated here as a 386 SX 16. So that we will confirm when we open uh, the box afterwards. But here they actually did a rundown and a test of this. And they say that this um, machine is sturdy enough to be your only computer. And I was browsing through the whole test here, we won't go into that uh, here, but what I did find here is that they have some tables where they compare battery life and so on. And in good old fashion, as it was an important information back in the day, they also state what voltage and capacity your, your battery had. And they have listed this for each, um, each uh, system, so you see here is the Arima, it's, uh, it's this one, and they stated that this had a 12 volt 2.5 hour battery. And as we know that this needed 12 volt for the, um, the hard drive, it of course had 12 volt. And, and we have several options here, we can of course backfeed the power and use the um, hard drive connector and just inject power into that, because back in the day, uh, at least for the motherboard, it was only 12 volt and, and, and 5 volt for a, a portable computer like this. And what we might not be able to with just um, injecting this into the hard drive is that we might not be able to power the display. So the best way to power this, we try the barrel jack. If we can't get any life into the barrel jack, then we have to try to inject it through the battery as the system yeah, might think that the battery is in place and run of that. And to inject this into the battery poles, it's uh, 12 volt. But to make it simple for us, we just do 12 volt into the barrel jack and we use a ohmmeter and figure out what is 
negative and what is positive. And back in the day, a lot of instrumentation and a lot of portable computers was sent a negative. Today, it's almost always that the other pin of the barrel jack is the minus. But back in the day, we have all sort of configurations. But at least now we are sure that this should be a 12 volt. So let's um, go back and try to figure out how we inject the power. Yeah, I was nosing around a bit and found an old article here from uh, PC Magazine. It stated that the battery is 12 volt. So I do think what we are trying to inject here is 12 volt. And I'm just going to check if the 12 volt is coupled to the center pin or to the um, older pin. So when I find um, some conclusive proof of that, I'm just trying to power inject something. And I also try to open some compartments and see if I can uh, get the battery. Because it's probably also possible to power inject to the, the battery with 12 volt if you're not sure what this is. And the way I normally do this, I use my um, my trusted fluke and just um, try to check this, put this on, on continuity test, like so. And I will check what is... Hmm, the power switch here is on. Yeah, actually, I'm touching both of them. And this one short beep means that there is a capacitor in the way here, and that probably means that the whole power supply inside the barrel jack is insulated from the rest of the circuit. So we have to do this in another way. I can't find anything out with measuring there, so I will try to pry this open again. And this probably is the battery compartment, and some has taken out the battery and left us with with four plugs. Not four plugs, but four pins, of course. That probably is not going to tell us much. This yellow one is the center pin. If they have left the battery in here, it will have made my, much, my life much easier. Of course, if the battery has leaked, it would have destroyed anything. But as it is now, there is not many screws left here. So I am just as well have to, um, to dismantle this a bit more. It's, yeah, it's almost completely disintegrated anyway, so why not? This has actually gone through the plastic. Here you can see someone has been prying here before to try to open this. I don't know if they didn't spot these screws or not, but these screws are clearly still holding out. This bracket is just for this, yeah, it probably are. We had this single screw here back behind the display. Okay. 
but I actually have paid even for the freight charge if I knew this has been picked on this much probably not I love to be the first one inside uh, electronics and I do find it hard so often if someone has beaten me to it and, and been inside because it's really difficult to know what people actually are thinking and how much competence and know-how they actually have about these things here you have some standoffs to support um, the uh, sliders up here and you do have this was strange I was under the impression that this was a normal hard drive but then why this power that makes no sense and also I can see here that this power is first fed to this board and then it goes back down here again and I will try to check is this yellow and black wire no they actually going to this board yeah I was totally wrong they're going to um, to this board here this is the power supply board Yeah, and here it actually stated that this yellow wire is the plus adapter and the plus adapter is the center pin as I can see on the back here and that means that I have to find the barrel jack and I have to plug it in here and I will try to inject 12 volt but what about this as I said this seems like a perfectly healthy Maybe there are some more. No, it's not. But this is of course enough to run a, a hard drive. It is 5 volt, 12 volt and the ground wire. So this probably is it. I'm going to disconnect this so I don't break any more. And I do wonder about some battery leakage or battery damage. But if I want to inspect the main board, then I have to dig deeper in. And maybe I do. But just to check if anything is is working in any capacity I think we we will do just fine with things as it is yeah I will just go and, and find a, a barrel jack that I can use for this this time I will make it easy I do have this 1.250 milliamps 12 volt switching adapter and I of course misspoke it's 1.25 amps not milliamps it's not rated for the same as is stated here it was a two and a half amp charger but then this should charge both the battery and you should also operate the hard drive and none of that is is present so I'm going to um, to gamble on this I just took it up like so connect it to power yeah and I just try to power on it is a red light here okay something's happened I see it on the screen here I actually get some memory testing I can try to turn off some uh, overhead lights see if it's possible to capture this on the camera yeah you can see something at least CMOS system option not set CMOS display type mismatch keyboard error run setup utility and 448 kilobytes okay so here something is is clearly wrong but at least the, the screen appears to be yeah working okay it's a bit scratchy this potentiometer but yeah so I will definitely take this apart and see if I can get it to boot at least yeah I will turn on some lights again so yeah like so and it just keep beeping at me but I'm going to disconnect this power and I'm going to yeah, just dismantle the lot here so I can get to see the, the motherboard here I actually was preparing to use a lab power supply but I did not need that of course this also has been dismantled before it's clear that these screws has been opened by someone that did not have the right screwdriver I of course don't have the exact right screwdriver either but this is one of my Galo screwdrivers and they normally work just fine on older equipment this is not posi drive it's a Phillips screw head okay I 
take these screws, put them in the other, and this one is fastened with one screw, and then it just slides box like so. This actually is connected to the, the metal sheet, and that's fine. Power supply might just stay nicely in place. This can be disconnected, yes. And this for the power supply can be disconnected. Yeah, then. Yeah, just fiddling with the last of the wires here and I need to get this wire out of the top cover so that um, we are not smashing our screen when it falls over. Yeah, I'm not sure, but maybe this just slides through here, if it's big enough. And yeah, with some conviction it was, convincing. And the screen is disconnected. You can see here some of this metal is few bar. And yeah, this just slides out of here. Yeah, and of course the, the floppy drive needs to be disconnected as well. This hopefully also has a connector on the motherboard. Yes, it did. Yeah, and I also have this connector in front here. And this is also clearly being loosened before because these screw leads don't look like they're all there. Like so. And what do we have here? I'm not totally sure, but I do think that these are 1 megabit chips, and then there should be 4 megabytes in here. <coughs> yeah, but what else do we see here? We have a, a huge daughter board here, with some bodge wires. The chipset in this is clearly um, chips and technologies, or just chips as they state here. Oh, this board is really stuck in there. Probably some corrosion on the pins. Started to get it loose from both. There are two connectors here like like so. And this is probably the ISA bus. And this is probably the VGA card. Yeah, I do think it is. Yeah, and it also stated here yeah, VGA board. And you can see it has some memory chips. And this is four six fours. So there is actually 6400 and 206k on this board and some more bodge wires and yeah chips and technologies we will put this back afterwards and there is the, the intel chip and there is a, a lithium battery at least it's not a nickel cadmium battery so it has not been uh, been leaking but we um, will replace that one probably and you have the keyboard connector here it's soldered to the um, to the board it's not on a pin racer and yeah chips and technologies we don't have any cache or something on this board silicon logic i wonder if this is the floppy controller yeah i'm not really sure I don't know what's integrated in this uh, old chips and technology chipset, but there are some discrete logic here. And you have the, the BIOS, and it's um, Amy BIOS. And you can see here that this is probably some upgrade BIOS for, for something. And you have a, a keyboard controller over here, also from Amy. And if you look at some date codes here, you have uh, the 25th week of 90, 6th of 90. 90, 90, 90, 25, 25th week, 10th week, yeah, 90, 14, 90, 06, 90, 24, 97, 90, 27. So this is the, the newest one I've gone, been able to spot so far. There is some rust on this oscillator can, 16 megahertz. 
but this is not the one that run the, the ships because all the 386 are clocked at double and this is the 32 megahertz crystal that's running this so I did get this wrong this is not a 20 megahertz it's a 16 megahertz uh, both CPU and main board all these ships are clearly made in in uh, 1990 so this computer is from the 1990 and as I said this this one here from the, the 27th week of uh, 90 is the, the newest chip you can of course check on the VGA card as well yeah 19th week of 90 here you can also see some bodge with a capacitor soldered straight to the chip and this is the socket for the 387 uh, coprocessor yeah and everything looks nice and, and shiny we are going to measure the, the battery sorry that you won't be able to see what we do here because I'm not able to get this display to look up at you when I film yeah and it's about zero watt but I do think I got this exact same battery so I'm going to um, to change out this battery and I'm going to, to put things back together again in some fashion you can see here there are pieces of plastic everywhere and as I said I won't bother to make this look shiny and new but I will take and use some um, maybe I just use some uh, ordinary super glue and try to, to get this in place I also can of course use some acetone and try to melt it in place but I'm not totally sure about that and also we will need to sort out this sort out this memory issue of course the memory could be defect but I did spot something straight away and that is that all these ships are the ones with solder pads and I do remember even back in the day I used to take a, a pencil with um, the eraser uh, on the back and just scratch over this and things was working much better this time I'm going to use the scotch bright like so there are two different um, memory chips up here they have the same population and, and stuff but they actually is two different breeds here you do have um, these ones from uh, Texas Instruments and this one by the look of them they're yeah microns probably yeah it has this circuit with a square Hynix at least they're different yeah so the next thing is changing this uh, barrel battery and I do have the exact same battery it's um, yeah it's even the same brand so I'm just going to um, to desolder this one and put this, um, this new one in here yeah and I just desoldered it I grabbed my desoldering wick and discovered straight away that I really don't need it because there is no solder on the top side of the board and I'm not going to dismantle this board to solder this out I'm just going to do all the work from the top side as this is a true plated board there should be no problem with that but it, it's a bit difficult to get the heat to uh, tack to the battery so I will try to um, to heat it some more and then just pry it out yeah like so I think I think I think it's got enough heat now and on the other side it should be easier because I do think it's a lesser plane in the middle than it was on this one and I just discovered that I am out of solder here in the shed so I'm just going to tack this in place the easy way I'm just going to reheat the solder joints on the through hole and just melt it in place this probably is the easiest battery swap I ever done Yeah, we can just check to see if the battery measures all right and it measures 3.6 volt so everything is all right there and I will try to put this back on I will put some dioxide into these like so 
I don't know if it will do anything good, but at least I don't think it will do any harm. This was pretty difficult to, to get unplugged, like so. And I might also do that on uh, these memory sockets. And you see this is the plastic memory socket that breaks easily. It seems to go just fine. And yeah, and I give um, the memory sockets a good helping of deoxide, and I use this stuff from uh, Biltem, and this is the one with oak lubrication, it's just cleaner. Yeah, and I got a little extra on here, so I just clean up what's floating around. Yeah, and I reinstalled the, the memory in the sockets, and I of course managed to put them in the wrong way, so I have to um, to take them out again, but I am making sure now to put them in in the same sockets that they was before, so that if this is wrong, I will get the exact same error as I did earlier. And by wrong, I mean of course a memory error or an error with the memory sockets or something on the main board. And what do we need more to test this? We actually need this this top on so that we can connect the power boards. And it's not much that we really need to connect. We need to connect this and this, and probably this one in front. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can also connect the, the floppy connector. Uh, it will at least see if the drive is, is turning and, and spins up. Like so. I, I forgot to check, but I have to check that there is some insulation in place under this metal thingy yes of course it is so this is what's going against this uh, VGA board and this corner is also loose and that's by design but we need to have this in place to because the power switch and the barrel jack uh, needs to um, to go into it like so yeah and this should just slide in like so with all the leads, yeah, it should just go like this. And this one we won't need to connect, and we will need to connect this one and this one. And we of course need to connect this one for the display, as up here. I also have this this keyboard with these pins with spread eagle all over the way here and I don't know how much these pin actually can take of movement before they break off the center pin that actually is the keying of a PS2 connector like this or a DIN mini DIN or what they, they called it is um, actually broken off and it took two different screwdrivers to bend out the spins but I do think they will fit in the connector now so just let's uh, try it we should connect straight in like so and this one this one was connected down here it wasn't really this, okay. It has to be this one, but I do remember that this was able to bend around some things, but I will just support this with something underneath like so, so that it will be a bit higher, and then this will reach down here. Yes, and I will connect with the same oh, terrible mess I made. And this is the keyboard and it's off and I turn it on again the red light is lighting up oh I forgot the slider so the background board is totally f oh, 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 oh this is totally fault because this should of course be like this 
that was why I remembered it being so much longer it should of course be connected like so and this in the back here yes let's hope we didn't damage anything this was just a oh I connected the power to the, the back of the screen let's hope I didn't break anything that was a really foolish thing to do it's red light nothing on the keyboard the display looks about like it did before it uh, comes up 440 kilobytes of memory tries to spin the floppy drive yeah and now it allows me to run the CMO setup I will turn off the lights again so that you will be able to uh, to see the screen I know the, the lights are really flickery when they are like this but I will try here and you might be able to to see something yeah I just try to adjust for better visibility here yeah. and anyway I will just try to run several setups try to enter something it's January this is the one that should have the page up or page down where is that uh, maybe it shift like so no. Maybe it's plus and minus. No, maybe num block and then plus. Oh, I have to drop this, maybe it's the FN. Then I am able to shift this. Yes. Uh, it's not much contrast to get of this screen, but with the FN key I was able to select here, and I select this, and I also select the date, and we have July, it's the, it's the 18th of July, oh. 2023 and the time as of now I have no idea I think it's something in the evening okay it's 21.0 I think we don't have any this and primary display we do have and that is VGA or EGA keyboard installed and that's it base memory side 64k this is only for, for counting up and maybe this RAM chips is not compatible with this system I can try some other chips but as of now I do try to save the settings yes no does not work maybe F10 works okay there I get a Y and enter it's um, Arima computer corp it's booting 64 KB of memory it's counting to 448 and it goes beyond uh, and it tries to spin the floppy yeah and it also said same checkup and it's turned itself off and that might be the power adapter no it's it's just uh, rebooting yeah but that's it for um, this first review of this um, scrapyard heap 
scrap heap or what you call it of a computer we are um, going to follow up on this of course but uh, as for now we are um, going to check if it works with some other memory sticks and I do have to see what I have laying around of course I have some um, 30 pins of memory but this machine might be uh, be picky about it so that has to wait for uh, my next uh, episode hopefully it will be just in a couple of days I didn't reach my goal of uh, 1000 subscribers um, before the summer but I stretched the goal to um, 1000 subscribers during the summer and with a little help from you guys I will be able to reach that goal so hope to see you again in my next video thanks for watching see you in the next one